Steve, you're not going to get to join us for our... Oh, be careful. You're always falling over. You're not going to get to come join us for our demonstration on the drill press today because you haven't done your work. You and a couple other students need to do your work. So I have a book here for you, and I have your Google Classroom for you. Look, it's all right on here. School is super important, Stephen. You have to do your work, okay? Tina, you're right. There are two safety tips this week. I'm glad to see you have your safety glasses on. It's just too bad you had to drill some holes in your head to put them on. But yes, you're right. There are two safety tips. Look at that. Always remember to be super safe on Christmas break. Try not to eat too many cookies and watch out for flying reindeer. Also, the more important one, always remember when operating the drill press, wear them safety glasses and clamp all work to the table. Hey guys, don't be like Steven. Don't be back there having to do the work. I don't have to wear this now. I'm not over there by Steven. Don't be like Steven. Don't be over there having to do the work instead of being at the demonstration. Do your work. Hey guys, today I wanted to talk to you about the drill press. And the drill press is an amazing machine. Um, so if you think about it, at the beginning of the year, we learned these four machines and we called them the big four. You see the planer, table saw, jointer, and way over there is the radio saw. And those we call the big four, big four. The next machine we learned last week, we started talking about the bandsaw. This week is the drill press. And these we call the secondary four. Yeah, they're not, they're, I mean, hold on, don't, I'm not trying to hurt any machine's feelings. They're very important, but we just don't categorize them in the big four. If you remember the big four, they have to do with the seven steps of milling lumber. These four are secondary because they don't have to do with the seven steps of milling lumber. They do other things. Bandsaw, like last week, outside of regular cuts. This week's machine, though, enough attention off of it, but this week's machine is, hi, there's Tina with their safety glasses on, because this week's super safety tip is wear your safety glasses on the drill press. There it is, the drill press. The drill press, although it doesn't do a lot of things, it's not like the bandsaw where it can cross, cut, and rip and do outside irregular cuts. It's not like any of those other machines. What it does, it does really well, and that is drilling, boring, and it can also do mortising, and you're gonna read it can do sanding. And so I wanna show you a couple of those things today. Let me grab my safety glasses and I'll meet you in one minute. All right, guys, I'm back. I have my safety glasses. I wanted to start off with the parts of the drill press, and this is in your study guide in Google Classroom. The parts of the drill press are by far the hardest part of the test. They are the part that you'll have to study the most. What in the world is Colin doing back there? Colin, that's my stick rule. What are you doing with that saw? What in the world? We better keep an eye on him. I think he might be trying to get me. We gotta watch him. But look, look at the parts. You guys are the first to see it. I just built a brand new tabletop for the drill press. Brand spanking new. We'll use it for the first time today. That's the top of the table. The drill press is equipped with what's called the chuck, and I have one here. The chuck, it's a new term, you'll read about it. The chuck is what holds the drill bit. And in the old days, I shouldn't probably say that, but back in the day, chucks used to have what's called a key. And you can see the, the keyhole here, and then here's the key that goes inside of the keyhole. And the way it used to work is that key, when you turned it, would allow that jaw inside of the chuck to come free. And there's three jaws inside, and as you tighten that jaw up, those three teeth come forward and hold on to it. And the problem was, back in the day, people, as they were turning their drill press on, they were forgetting to remove the key from in the chuck. And so that when they turned this bad boy on, as you can imagine, that key was flying across the road. I watched it when I was in high school. One of the, it wasn't me. Don't even think it was me. One of the kids in my class did it. And thankfully, my shop teacher had the key tied onto a chain. So when it started to fly off of there, it didn't hit anybody. Um, but that was kind of one of the problems with the key 
in a keyed chuck. And nowadays, the new wave of technology is a keyless chuck. And so I brought a portable drill. It's just a drill, a, a, a portable drill, a cordless drill. And the new technology is what's known as keyless. And so as you look at the chuck, same thing, but there's no key on it. And in order to take the bit or the whatever is in the drill, which is usually a drill bit, you just hold the chuck and then put the drill in reverse and pull the trigger. As it goes in reverse, those teeth go in. When I put it in forward with the forward and reverse button, when I push the button, I can get it to go in forward. If I hold the chuck and have it in forward, you see them go back in reverse and then forward they come forward. In order to put the drill bit in, I put it between the teeth, hold the chuck, put it in forward, and then I can get it in place. All along, we've kind of been talking about portable versions of the machines that we're learning about. And this week's is a drill press. This is a, a hand drill, but it's got a cord. And so it's portable in the fact that I could pick it up and move it to the job site, but not as portable as a cordless drill. And so they both have their positives. This one has a battery, so it can run out of power. This one has unlimited power, but if if you and I were trying to build a clubhouse back in the woods and we needed to drive some screws in, we'd have to run an extension cord to use this. If we were using the cordless one on our clubhouse, we wouldn't have to worry about uh, a cord, but we would have to worry about replacing our battery periodically. And so look at the drill press here again. A couple more parts we'll talk about. This is the pilot feed wheel. As I turn it, the chuck riding on what's known as the quill goes up and down. That's how I can get the drill bit to be used to drill a hole in the board. Obviously the table, if you remember when we learned the radial arm saw, we said another machine that has a column is the drill press. This is the belt guard underneath here. You're gonna read all about it, but there are two pulleys and two belts. And by adjusting the way the pulleys are, I can adjust the speed. And right now I leave it about 1500 RPMs, but I can change it. I can make it slower or I can make it faster. I can slow it down if I was drilling through something like metal or make it a little bit faster if I needed to drill through something a little bit softer. Um, depending on the speed determines what I'm drilling. I can also do sanding on the drill press and I'll have to set up the speed for that as well. For us, for the most part, we try to use our drill at about 1500 RPMs. I'll be right back. Any drill bit that we're going to use has to be clearly fastened into the chuck and the board that we're going to drill has to be secured to the table. The new table that I've built has slots that are called T-slots in it and they run the length of the table and then we have these clamps that slide in the T-slots. They have a wing nut on the top that allows us to tighten the clamp to hold the board so that when I drill it, it doesn't spin away. As I go to put the drill bit in, I'm going to remove the key, set the drill bit between the jaws, hold the drill bit, and then turn the chuck, turn the cordless or keyless chuck to be able to tighten the bit in place. When I go to drill a hole, I need to determine the depth that I want to drill down through. And on the left-hand side, I'm going to turn the drill press. Give me one second. On the left-hand side of the machine, I have what's called the depth stop, and you've read about it, you've heard about it. The depth stop controls how far I can drill down into the table. On the back of the machine, I have a table locking clamp and a table adjustment. If I loosen it and spin the handle, let me turn this camera just a little bit. There we go. If I loosen the table locking clamp and then turn the handle, I can get that table to raise and lower and then lock in place. Once I set the depth stop so that it drills to the correct depth, then I can begin to drill my hole. There are two washers or and two nuts on the depth stop. One controls the depth and the other one locks it in place. I'll be right back, I'm gonna set it up. The drill bit that I'm using is called a Forstner bit. And a Forstner bit is the only drill bit 
that we're going to use right now that creates a flat bottom hole. There's also a multi-spur bit. But the Forstner bit is going to give us a flat bottom hole. In order to turn the machine on, there's a switch pull out on the red. I'll grab the pilot feed wheel and rotate it down. until I get to the depth that the depth stop allows me to get to. Once I reach the bottom of the hole, I can shut the machine off and then I'll end up with a perfectly drilled hole that goes all the way through. I could have stopped the depth stop sooner so that I didn't draw all the way through, but I wanted to show you a through hole. I could also set it up, like I said, so that the depth stop stops at a certain point, and we're gonna need this in a few minutes, stops at a certain point so that I can't drill any deeper than what that depth stop allows. That's the furthest it'll go down. Anytime I want to clean the table off, I don't want to use my hands. I'll get sawdust or I'll get splinters. So instead, I'll use a bench brush. Use a bench brush. You say, why is he showing us this? We know this. It's on the test. Use a bench brush. Sorry about that, we had a little technical difficulties. I wanna talk a minute about a drill bit, the anatomy of a drill bit. And this is a twist drill bit. It's a 3 8 inch twist. And the drill bit is made up of a few components that you need to know of. The shank is the part that goes into the chuck. The twisting part that rides along the outside are known as the flutes. And the flutes are, you tell me, anybody know? Tina, you know what it is? You're right, Tina. It's the part that carries the sawdust shavings away from the point of contact. Without the flutes, all that sawdust would be mired or down in that hole and it wouldn't get out of there. And so the flutes move the sawdust up and away from the point of contact. And then you have the point at the end that starts the cut. Nice job, Tina, with the... All right, guys. Why, Colin, what are you doing? I gave you detentions that don't work. You're here all the time. You don't go home, so it doesn't matter about detentions. I tried to call home. Your parents don't answer the phone. I don't even know if you have parents. And now you're coming after me with a saw, and you got my stick rule? You guys are going to have to come back and help me. This is getting real scary. So look what I got here. I have a long board on the drill press. Let me turn it so you can see and if I needed to drill a long board, like what you see there, and say, well, is there a correct side to drill it on? And there is. The long end of the workpiece should always go out to the left. If you think about the way the drill press spins, it's clockwise. And so as it grabs the board, if it was a long-ended board and it was out the left, it would spin and hit the post. If the long end of the board was out the right and it spun, whap, it would hit me. The long end of the board always goes out the left. Steven finished his work, so he's allowed to join us. Me and Colin had a heart-to-heart. -heart. He's only using the saw to make sure if I need to cut some plugs out. He's not actually trying to cause me any harm. Right, Colin? You're a good boy. Steven, you're a good boy, too. Now that you did your work, we're, on, we're all right. So listen, the whole purpose of this demonstration on the drill press, the whole reason for this demo is to start to talk about our curio wall shelf. And last week, 
We talked about the arches. And this week, we have to come up with a way that we can attach our top and bottom to the main cabinet. And the way that we're going to do it is with what is known as plugs and screws. And so plugs and screws, you can see there are walnut colored plugs in the bottom of the box. And underneath these plugs, there are screws that hold the top onto the bottom of the cabinet. And on top of it, we've put walnut plugs to hide over the fact that there are screws in it. And so the last part of the video, I just want to show you that. On the top of the board, I have it all laid out where my holes are going to go. And I, you can see I've, I've just reused the board. So I have little crosshairs where I want to drill the holes. I'm going to set it up and I'll be right back. All right, guys, so I put a drill bit in, tightened the chuck. It is an eighth inch twist. After that, I set my board down on the table, lined it up for where I wanted to drill. Then I clamped it in place. And then the last thing I did is I set the depth stuff so it will go all the way through. Notice when I drill a hole, I don't go straight down through. Just a little bit at a time. A little bit and then back up. And a little bit and back up. That gives that drill bit a chance to work the sawdust out. You can see I have the through hole. I know there's a bunch of other holes because I'm reusing the top, but there's the through hole. The second hole that I'm going to drill is a 3 8 Forstner bit half, half way through the board. A flat bottom hole that goes halfway through the board. I set the depth stop up so it could only go halfway through. So once I reach the halfway point, it can't go any further. I drill one, let it stop. Realign it for the next one, retighten, drill again. What I end up with is a top that has through holes and also halfway through flat bottom holes so I can hide the screws once I screw it together. I'll be right back. I got to set up for the next part. All right. So the drilling, the sun is kind of right in my eyes. The drilling process we just did is a three part process. There's that eighth inch drill bit that we use first. It makes a pilot hole. If you, when you're building your clubhouses in the woods and you invite me to come along, I'll be there. But the first thing I'll say is, are you pre-drilling your holes? Cause I'm not about to split any wood by not pre-drilling. So that's what that's for. It releases the pressure so that you could drill a screw through without cracking the wood. The second drill bit we used is a 3 8 Forstner. It's the one that drills a flat bottom hole. It's the one that we set the depth stop up so it could only go halfway through. And then the last drill bit you're going to see in one second is a plug cutter. It's what we're going to make the plugs that cover over the holes out of. And so I have the key removed. I have the board clamped in place. I set the plug cutter in, hold the top of the chuck, and tighten the keyless chuck. I'll put the key back in place. I have the depth stop, the depth stop set up. When I cut with the plug cutter, the plug will stay down inside of the board. And I'll show you that in a second. Cut in a little bit at a time. Once I shut it off, I can adjust it to go to a different spot to make another one. The type of wood I'm using is cherry. I'll be right back.